QAQC, a very fashionable buzzword, thrown about in almost any public announcement, resource report, SOP, or training course, as often as you see a dead possum on State Highway 1 or the royal wedding featuring as a headline in the New Zealand news. 95% of our industry doesn't seem to get any further than QAQC, something to do with standards blanks. It is absolutely ridiculous that the purpose and proper implementation of QAQC is completely lost to most, and the money and time spent by companies to satisfy the joy police would fund many, many kilometers of exploration drilling. Just the other day I received an email asking how many standards should be submitted to satisfy JORG? White papers and other non-peer-reviewed advice by industry consultants mostly posted free on social media or other websites are often not correct or they're missing the point. Papers on the subject and peer-reviewed books like the Ozymans Monograph 30 are limited in properly exploring the subject. And database software that we use every day, even some of the very expensive packages, only offer limited options. This needs to change. So in this video, I want to try and set the record straight on a few really basic concepts and perhaps get some discussion going, if you must, on how we can collectively improve what we do as an industry. For me, a lot of the things that I'm talking about in these videos are essentially coming out of my own personal journey into these subjects. I don't want to set the expectation that these are expert videos and there are plenty of very experienced people out there who specialize in this specific field. But who do we listen to? And who to trust in this age of digital and social media overload? One of the reasons I'm making these videos is that it's actually not easy to find good and reliable sources of information where important concepts like these are properly explained. Everybody has an opinion. So I'm sticking my neck out with this one a little bit, but we'll see where it goes. So as a young exploration geo, at some point you're going to end up on a drill rig. You spend five minutes with the senior geo around the rig and you get told where the fire extinguisher is and where that big red button is to switch the damn thing off when it explodes. And while the senior geo is winding up the car windows to drive off back to the air conditioned office, there's the parting comment to make sure that the bubble stay in the middle of the gun splitter and oh yeah, throw in some standards and blanks for QAQC. So let me start by talking about why I believe there's such confusion in the mining industry on this. It only started really dawning on me when I was reviewing public announcements of exploration results, and in particular the Table 1 that came into effect in 2012. It really does look like the vast majority of operators look at QAQC as a mandatory compliance component to satisfy the joy police of which I spoke in my previous video. Somehow we think we need to insert standards because some dude in the 90s salted some coal with alluvial gold and we're all going to be sent to the North Korean work camps if we don't insert these magical standards. I will say here again that the JORG or the CIM or whatever just want you to be transparent about reporting what you do, not how you do it. So that being said, we can start off. Why are we doing this thing called QIQC? Well, it's not difficult to argue that good financial planning and good decisions in your mining or exploration project are based on good data. The old saying goes that if you put crap in, then you get crap out. Pretty much every page in a QAQC training course will tell you that these days. So good data is important. In fact, it's critical. Critical doesn't even have the right urgency to it, but I can't find words that make it sound even more important. So, right, before we start a project, drilling, mining, anywhere we collect data, we want to make sure that the data we are going to collect is of good quality. Then, as we are collecting the data, we want to know if indeed it is of good quality. Now, herein lies the exact distinction between QA and QC. QA and QC are two different things, and it's mostly a timing thing. With quality assurance, we are looking to prevent errors from being made by having in place appropriate standard operating procedures, SOPs. These SOPs stipulate in a step-by-step -step way how each person should carry out the sampling or measuring or preparation work, and by doing so, bias and errors or variance due to everyone doing something different are limited. And the quality is assured because the best and correct process is being followed by everybody. 
Now you would like to think that the concept of having SRPs is so basic, but more often than not in technical due diligence work or when I review exploration projects, I come across a mention made in a project's technical report that appropriate QAQC has been used only to then draw a complete blank when I asked for the SOPs to be sent to me for review. The last one I did, the only thing I got from the senior exploration geo were the driller's SOPs, including how to change a drill bit and all the material safety data sheets. Now, how you make proper SOPs is not for this video. It's not that hard and there are many companies where you can buy proper ones right off the shelf. Digirock, for instance, has good and comprehensive exploration ones. Go and visit their site. QC is a bit trickier. With QC, you're trying to monitor or control the quality of the measuring, sampling or assaying process as the process is going. Now, these last five words are critical. As the process is going. The only way to do this is by constantly evaluating checks and balances during operation and then correct whatever sampling, measuring or analytical system to make sure our system is always in control. In our industry, we call these checks and balances standards, blanks and duplicates. And by inserting these checks and balances, we are constantly controlling the quality. So at this stage, it is important to talk about how we express quality, otherwise you don't know how to actually measure it. Now, quality of data can be expressed in terms of accuracy and precision, with generally speaking, a highly accurate and precise data being representative of whatever it is that is measured or sampled, and therefore of high quality. Now, what makes it all a bit tricky is that there are actually no easily calculatable and agreed quantitative thresholds to express good accuracy and precision. And secondly, whether the quality is indeed possible depends on the purpose, otherwise shortened to the concept of fit for purpose. This can be pretty subjective at the best of times. Now this is all pretty standard stuff. And again, most courses and books will summarize this easily enough. But here are the problems. The first one is with timing. We fail miserably as an industry to see the need for appropriate timing in this QC process. At the most offending end of the scale, QC data just sits there and it never gets analyzed. Even worse, I've seen reports by resource competent persons that state that a review of QC data was not part of the scope of the work, which becomes really tricky when you have to go through the relevant items in table one on the JOR code, if that's what you use to report. Better, but still pretty useless, is the poor resource Joe who tries to make sense out of 12 months of QC data dumped on the desk four weeks before the resources do, with all the drilling finished weeks ago. Now what are they going to do? Tell their client that the drilling or the lab didn't deliver good enough quality data and that they need to re-drill or re-essay part or the whole thing? The process has finished. The horse is bolted. There's nothing to fix anymore, nothing to correct. There's no quality improved during the system anymore. Well, I hate being put in this spot. It's a complete waste of money, but with even higher and unrealistic expectations made of the competent person. So timing wise, you've got to analyze the QC data the moment it becomes available and then determine whether your process, whatever it is, is still in control and is giving you good quality data. If it's not, then you pick up the phone or get in your ute and you go and fix it straight away. Then you write what you've done in your pretty report and demonstrate that you are controlling the quality at every practical possible turn. This is the reason that as a small company you get your resource geos on board early, not so that you can suck you dry with their exorbitant fees, just to save you some money by preventing to throw 10 caves worth of standards and blanks down that drill hole. Now the second issue I have with is with the lack of proper tools and processes. And let's start with an example. Why would you religiously take field duplicates at every 20 samples? Or even worse, determined by your expensive database package that spits out sampling sheets to make your life easier. In most gold projects, all you're going to get is 800 out of a thousand duplicate pairs showing below detection results that tell you absolutely nothing about the precision. There you go, just saved you 10 grand. So this is just an example, but there are many ways to incorrectly deal with and analyze QC data. 
That is already assuming that you're part of the 5% who actually analyze their data in a timely fashion when it comes in and not weeks after the fact. Now this video is clearly not a detailed course in QIQC. It takes at least three days to run through the basic principles properly. In terms of working out proper tools and processes, there are so many things to discuss. So maybe just to leave you with some questions. Why a standard steward control plot, as you think you know it, is not necessarily the best tool to monitor accuracy? Why the one sample falling outside three standard deviations is a completely misunderstood and limited approach to process control? Why you shouldn't be using the standard deviation from the CRM spec sheet in your control plots? How there is so much to do with the appropriate manufacturing of CRMs that you should consider before you even start laying heavy repercussions on the results of your likely insufficient process control charts. Why you probably have never heard of QSOM process control charts. That crucifying the lab based on their failed standard is really not always appropriate most of the time and quite deconstructive to get a good and transparent dialogue going with people who you really want to have on your side and not against you. That determining whether a bias exists between CRM and lab results is not based on your eyeball. There is something called statistically significant. Ah, here's a contentious one. Why we are even going through the hassle of submitting CRMs to the lab, even though our lab is ISO accredited and does a ton of statistical process control the whole time. Most explorers are not even analyzing them properly or in time, so why bother? What are you trying to achieve? Do you think that all, others, all other industries do this? Are we doing this because of BREX and a misconception that our reporting codes demand us to? Yeah, I've seen dirty labs where CRM results were smudged and they do have their place, but give it some thought before you spend the money. That you can't and shouldn't determine whether something is, to, is a statistically significant bias if your system was out of control at any time. That you shouldn't discuss insertion of standards when you're discussing field sampling accuracy in your table one. Why nobody seems to care about the quality of the primary sample in, for instance, RC drilling, but we all get our knickers in a twist if the lab shows a CRM to have failed. That doing a proper lab audit is not as simple as taking pretty pictures of prep stations for an hour. That a scatter plot to express precision is a really, really limited tool and misses all sorts of opportunities to actually improve precision. Remember, Variance in your sampling is variance in your block model, and those mining guys really want to know whether it is ore or waste with some confidence. That a lot of improvements have been made since the original paper by Howarth and Thompson on how to calculate precision. That comparing quarter with half core isn't a good thing to do. That sample support is important, like really important. That most of that nugget effect that you hide behind is actually made up out of sample screw-ups of your team. Don't whine if you don't get your indicated resource because your variograms don't look as you expected. This is why you should have gotten those good SOPs in place. That inserting standards into your completely biased early stage rock chip sampling is pretty pointless. The purpose is just to get a binary sniff of the grey tenor and a 3% analytical bias is not going to change your opinion. So understand what fit for purpose really means. A QC goes beyond the lab analytical sample and also includes density, RC drilling, downhole measurements, and so on. Now I can keep going and going, but I won't. Point is, once you actually get past the point of the timing problem, most of the industry seems stuck on rejecting standards and picking up the phone to the lab if that one standard falls outside three standard deviations. Or a statement in a resource report that the precision based on the scatter plot is not great, but appropriate for this style of mineralization. Can we really not do better than that? Now, I'm also learning as I go. Every time I think I know the right way, I hear something else that I haven't got right. I love that about this industry, almost so much more to learn. And as a lesson to all young geos entering the industry out there, don't just assume that all your seniors know all this stuff. They don't. Be hungry, challenge the status quo, for God's sakes challenge it. Without it, no evolution. 
Also, all this has shown me that true experts in the QAQC fields in mining are actually quite hard to find. And if they exist, they certainly don't make a lot of noise. What are they, ninjas? If you're out there, please get in touch. I'd love to hear from you and put your thoughts and ideas in the spotlight. Right, in summary, QAQC, it's a timing thing. QA is preventing errors, QC is monitoring and fixing while the system is in process. Really simple. Get and use proper SOPs. Take care of them, review them often. Give them to geos before they start the job. Get your resource geo on board before you start to vet these things. Review your QC data constantly and make timely and ongoing decisions, not weeks or months after completion, but as you're collecting the data. Use proper techniques to determine accuracy and precision. Invest in proper training and proper software. Make sensible decisions on your lab accuracy issues. Just because that one standard failed in your probably incorrect analysis tool shouldn't lead to an automated re-essaying at the lab. And lastly, from now on, do not use the term QAQC samples. These things don't exist. They are QC samples because QA and QC are two different things. Thanks for watching and don't forget to comment and subscribe. See you in the next video.